Welcome to my Fictional Languages Master video. This is gonna be a lot, so strap in. It will be worth it. By the end, you guys are gonna be so powerful. You're gonna be inventing so many languages. All right, hi guys. I'm K.L. Greywill, AKA Kelso, world building gremlin extraordinaire and creator of the sci-fi fantasy webcomic 85 Unseen, for which I have created a few fictional languages that appear in the art and text of the comic. I get a lot of questions about how I make my fictional languages and the fonts for them, so I've done about a dozen rapid one-minute TikTok tutorials explaining various aspects of that process. I wanted to compile my process and like all of my favorite resources for conlang making into one comprehensive video. Conlang, for those of you that aren't aware, is short for constructed language. If you're creating a fantasy world, whether it's for a Dungeons & Dragons game or a fantasy story that you're writing, chances are you've heard that term before. And to be sure, there are countless videos on making conlangs. Some of them go very in-depth and get very technical. You can consider this to be a practical author's guide to making fictional languages and fonts from start to finish. I say practical because I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of linguistics. I want to make you aware of all the tools, generators, etc. that I use for making conlangs so that you can create something that you're satisfied with and that works for your story needs. Any websites that I mention will be linked in the description. And here's how I'm going to structure this. First, I'm going to talk about conlang planning and how you can draw on real world influences for your language. Step two, I'm going to talk about how your language sounds, so it's phonology, and I'll talk about how you can build phonetics for your language using generators or from scratch. Step three will be on vocabulary. Step four will be on how your language looks, so orthography, again, using generators or from scratch. And then step five will be on conlang font making, so how you can type in your new language. I'm gonna throw up a speed paint of me working on an episode of 85 Unseen if you wanna just listen, but I am gonna be showing a lot of stuff on the screen in this video. I just didn't wanna do animation for the avatar for the whole video. <laughs> so step one, making a language profile. I recommend doing this at least to some extent, whether you're making a language completely from scratch or using a generator. Being able to situate your language in the world that you're creating will ensure that you have a basic understanding of the who, what, when, where of this language. I created this linguistic overlay for my map of the world of 85 Unseen that shows some of the real world languages that influence the naming of different regions. My most important conlang, Avabic, is a dead language that originates here and is heavily inspired by Sanskrit, so here's its basic profile. I have two other important conlangs, Zali and Nevenai, which I haven't introduced yet in the story at the time of making this video. There are a few other minor conlangs which are smattered throughout the world as well. At some point, I will probably do a tour of my conlangs where I show their origins, influences, show how to say basic greetings in them, etc. But that's for another video. I really recommend taking a look at some ethno-linguistic maps for this stage, especially if you're planning to create a lot of conlangs that have real-world analogs or influences. It's also a good idea to look through some language family trees as you're thinking about what languages you want to draw influences from. Language is not disembodied from culture. And even if you think your conlang exists in a bubble, and no matter how far removed you think it is from reality, chances are your real-life knowledge of languages shapes your fictional ones. So personally, my best practices for language making always involve examining the relationships between real languages and your fictional one. This will help you to spatially organize the languages and cultures you're drawing from, and hopefully give you an idea of your language's status in the world. Is it a lingua franca, or is it endangered? How many people speak this language when your story takes place and why? For example, Avabic is meant to be this mysterious ancient language which is related to a powerful, now extinct society. A lot of fantasy worlds use languages like Latin, Greek, or Norse as the basis for magic, spells, mystical power, whatever, but there are so many other amazing and interesting classical languages from outside Europe that don't get nearly as much attention in mainstream science fiction or fantasy. I also studied a little Hindi and Urdu while I was in grad school, which are both related to Sanskrit, so there's a genuine interest there. That made Sanskrit an easy choice as an influence on Avabic. Of course, if you really love Latin or Greek or Old Norse, then use that as your influence. You're probably better off choosing language influences that you're passionate about rather than picking less commonly represented ones that you're not as interested in. Worst case, you risk reducing that real life language to an ornamental or a decorative part of your conlang if you don't care about that language's history or culture. 
Maybe you're wondering why I'm even talking so much about real life languages to begin with. For one thing, even if you're a conlanger or you're already really into linguistics, I think selecting a few real life languages as templates that you can look to when you're structuring vocabulary, grammar, and scripts will make the process less overwhelming. If you're just trying to generate some neat background languages to toss into the world, you don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time thinking about this. But if you're doing any amount of in-depth world building, I think that creating languages, like any other aspect of world building that I'll cover on this channel, from designing maps to inventing magic systems, should be integrated into your narrative themes. I would really encourage you in your planning stage to consider that not just your language, but your entire fantasy world does not exist in a vacuum. Your conlang can and should strengthen the themes of your story, so don't be afraid to draw inspirations from real-life languages. You may also want to consider how specific aspects of your world, lore, or magic system, if you have one, may come to bear on your conlang. What do I mean by that? Well, there are all kinds of creative ways that your world's environment might shape how your language looks and sounds. Without being too spoilery, the world that my language was constructed in reflects a different experience of time and reality. So there is grammar in Avabic for uncertainty in verb tense because the people who spoke this language had a particular sensitivity to time. In Tzali, the script that I made features a lot of circles because this shape is important in the lore of 85 Unseen. You don't have to make specific decisions about the language at this point, just make sure you have a general idea for the environment that it originated in and currently exists in. Once you've addressed that, you can move on to refining how the language looks and sounds. Step two, deciding how your language sounds. Now, depending on your medium, this may or may not be really important. If you're doing some kind of RPG where you have to speak aloud, you probably want to pay close attention to consonants or making sure that whatever phonemes or units of sound you have in your language sound decent together. My medium is a webcomic, so I technically don't need to worry about how things sound because the script is only ever seen or read by people. That said, I still created an entire phonetic chart for my conlangs, and I won't show the full versions because those are for my patrons' eyes only. Uh, a phonetic chart is basically showing the places of articulation for all the individual sounds in your language, written in IPA, or the International Phonetic Alphabet. Your phonology can really be whatever you want. You can decide this all completely from scratch, or you might find vulgar lang helpful, which is a conlang generator. You can basically input any sounds that you want, or none at all, and it will generate a language for you. Here in the output, we can see it gives us a name, a phonetic chart, and a quick guide so we can see how those sounds are represented with plain English characters. It will also give us morphological rules and irregularities for nouns, declensions, prefixes, and verb conjugation. It will also give us a vocabulary list, which brings me to step three, vocabulary. There are a lot of ways you can go with vocabulary from building it all from scratch to generating infinite vocabularies with word generator programs. Now, like I mentioned before, the phonology of my main conlang for 85 Unseen, Avabic, is very Hindustani-esque, which felt appropriate seeing as my main inspiration for that conlang is Sanskrit. A lot of lore related to Avabic has links to real-life Vedic texts, so I wanted there to be some clear associations in the vocabulary. And personally, I love it when I read a story and I recognize the names of spells or places or people because they're derived from a language that I know. It feels sort of like a linguistic Easter egg, so I knew I wanted that in my story. And Avabic is my most important conlang, so I curated it very intentionally. I spent a lot of time with Sanskrit dictionaries so that some of my vocabulary for Avabic would have intentional links to it. However, for Zali and Nevenai, I relied more on vulgar lang to help me generate vocab lists and modify those as needed. Vulgar lang's vocab list is pretty decent, and you can copy and paste it easily if you want to save words. But there's another really great, more hands-on tool that you can use called Awkwards, which generates sets of random words. Essentially, you input layers of patterns or rules for letter combinations, and it will create a cohesive set of words that adhere to those. Now, you can get really complicated with this, but I will just run through like a simple example. So let's create a subpattern. I'm gonna call it V for vowels. And I'm just gonna place some vowel sounds in here and I will separate them with slashes. Then I'll make a second sub pattern with consonants called C. And then in this last row for the main pattern, I will say that I want words with a pattern of CVC -C for consonant, vowel, consonant. 
And now it's going to generate a list of words in a CVC format containing the letters that I specified for those sub patterns. You can go even further and add another sub pattern. Let's say you want some words to have a special ending. So I'm making a new sub pattern. We'll call it A. And I'm going to add A in parentheses to the main pattern, which will tell the program to generate words in the CVC format some with an A ending and some without. Now, if you read up on the notation for awkwards, there's really a lot you can do with this. You can create words with more syllables than this, with more complex patterns. And there's another tool called Lexifer, if you have some familiarity with coding, that's good for this. And another one called Gen, which also generates words through patterns kind of similar to awkwards. These are all great tools for building a cohesive, coordinated set of words. And they can also be used if you just need filler words for something. And now that we've got our sounds and our words, we get to do the fun part. Step four, deciding how your language looks. To me, this is the most creative part because it feels like it's where the language really comes to life. I try to tie in specific aspects of my world building into how my languages are written. For example, Visually, Avabic resembles the writing system for Sanskrit, Devnagari, which is also the writing system for many other South Asian languages. You can see this reflected pretty clearly in some of my characters if you just flip them vertically. However, Avabic is very blocky because I wanted it to resemble cuneiform, which is the oldest form of writing in the world, and I love that it evokes this feeling of being carved into ancient tablets. On the other hand, Zali uses lots of circular shapes because circles play an important thematic role in the story, and I had a lot of fun creating a script that used that shape as the basis for each letter. If you're not versed in different kinds of writing systems, this is the stage where you're going to want to figure that out. You've probably already heard of an alphabet, which is where the vowel and consonant sounds are all written out. Avabic is an alphabet mainly because that was easiest for me to type with. Same goes for Navanai, which is also an alphabet. Tzali is an abugida, not an alphabet, which means that the vowel sounds are represented by diacritical marks, which go on the top, middle, or bottom of the character. There are many other kinds of writing systems like abjads, where vowel sounds are completely implicit or not written. So Arabic is an impure abjad because most of its vowel sounds are not written. Some of them are though. And in a syllabary, like Japanese, each letter represents a syllable. You've got other languages like Mandarin Chinese, which use entire logograms to represent a whole word. Then, of course, you could go completely off the rails and invent something like the alien language used in Arrival, which uses logograms that are divided into 12 segments to convey meaning. The language Klingon from Star Trek is an alphabet. Sindarin, Tolkien's most well-known conlang is written in two different scripts, one which is an abugida and one which is an alphabet. Tolkien had a whole world of interesting languages, actually, and many of them were related to languages that he studied. So if you want to learn more about those, I will put a card up linking to a great video on this. I recommend just experimenting with scripts and seeing how you can reflect something about your world through them. But if you need some inspiration to get going, check out Omniglot's list of scripts for constructed languages, which are all user-created writing systems. I love this list, and going through this and just looking at real-life languages writing systems is a great way to get inspired. Another good tool is Graphion, which basically works by generating new iterations of glyphs based on the ones that you select. So you're given a set of strokes, and you can choose which will survive into the next generation, and eventually you get a refined set of strokes based on your choices. Through this, you can organically let your script emerge as you refine each iteration of characters. Step 5. Font making. If you want to be able to type in your conlang, this bit is for you. The first thing that you're going to want to do is head over to calligrapher.com and download their free font building template, which will give you 75 characters. By default, this is numbers, basic punctuation, and upper and lowercase English letters. But you can swap them out for any characters that you want. You're going to go download this template and fill it up with your conlang script. You can also print it, fill it out by hand, and then scan the QR code. I do this digitally with my drawing tablet, and you can see here I'm filling out the template for Nevenai, and then I upload it to Calligrapher, and I can go in and tweak the placement of the letters. 
I'm stupid and I like cursive writing systems, so I always have to go in and make sure that the points where my letters connect all line up. And then once it's adjusted, I can just download my font file and install it on pretty much any device. All you have to do is open the OTF or TTF file and now I can type in all my conlangs. Here's where it gets tricky. What if your language doesn't map on to English sounds? Or what if you don't even have an alphabet but some other kind of writing system? Well, let's start with the first issue. Okay, so I made a Vabic and alphabet because I knew it would be easier for me to type in, and I keep most of my sounds consistent with the letters on my English keyboard when I can. However, you can utilize the letters in any way that you want. Just keep the template so that you know which keys on your keyboard are assigned to what letters in your conlang. I created some modifiers in my font to account for sounds that aren't present in English, like aspirated versions of my consonants and long vowel sounds which aren't differentiated in English. So, for example, let's look at the word avabu, which is where avabic originates. We have these basic letters a, v, a, b, u. And if we write this in IPA, it makes the sounds a, v, a, b, u. But I want this to say avabu, not avaba. Avaba, it sounds so stupid. <laughs> the middle A should be a long vowel a ah, and not a, uh, so I have a separate version of all of my vowels with a diacritical mark for that. And the B should be aspirated, so any of my plosive consonants have a second form with this little tick through them to indicate aspiration. So you can get really creative with how to do the font building portion by creating multiple versions of the same letter. Now, for non-alphabets, I use a similar workaround. For an abjad or an abugida, what I do is basically create a version of each character with all three of my diacritical marks and then put all three versions of each character into the template. It's not as intuitive to type with, but it does work. If you have a language where the characters stack, like in Korean's Hangul script, to my knowledge there's not a way to incorporate that into this kind of template, and if you have a language that is written from top to bottom or right to left, there are usually specific settings in your software that you can adjust to change that. Alright, that's basically all I've got for you. So whether you choose to create from scratch or use generators for your language, I hope that this video has helped you get a little bit closer to bringing your world to life. The link to my webcomic, 85 Unseen, is in the description if you want to see some of my conlangs in action. And as always, a huge shout out to my patrons, Suisus, Tharvex, Morning Do 60, and Soda Khan. Make sure to like if you found this helpful and subscribe for more world building and storytelling content. Bye guys.